All right, so first and first, guys, how are you? Yeah, doing all right, thank you, man. Yeah, very well, very good. That's, that's very good to hear. So where I want to start is now I read something that this album has been somewhat of seven years in the making, and now a lot of things have happened in those seven years, I suppose. But, but what has had the greatest effect on your songwriting in this period? I think just the freedom to explore ideas, um, you know, with with no kind of solid framework around it no no kind of um um yeah there's just yeah there's just been limitless possibilities to to explore and i think that's been a very exciting process over the last 10 years of of, of making these records and um I, th i think you know that quote really about seven years obviously is not 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 a literal thing sure sure it, it, these songs aren't seven years old but just i think the process and the kind of mindset that I started with on Matador and and learning to sort of be my, I suppose, learning just to tr trust my instincts. And uh, and that was a really great lesson to learn, yeah. In that sense, uh, do you have a lot of confidence now then as a songwriter, perhaps more than, than in the past before those 10 years and when you were still uh, in Supergrass? No, I think it was a different thing because I, I okay. suppose I wasn't I wasn't like a lone songwriter, you know. Um, sure. So the kind of all of the pressure wasn't on just me. We we wrote a lot together, and um, you know, so I mean, I I I'd write songs, I suppose, and and have demos that I bring to the band, but but not not with the intensity that I do on this stuff. So uh, so no, I think it's I think it's a very different thing. But I think I think all of those those years in Supergrass were just. You know, yeah. I mean, I've been writing from a very young age, so right. Um, I, yeah, um, that obviously all helped to to be able to kind of um, get it right now. You know? Yeah, maybe this is something interesting to go into. Do you remember the first song that you wrote that you thought, well, this is actually this is actually pretty good. I can do something with this. Um, I don't know. I mean. I mean, not that they were not really that before. I suppose before the first Supergrass album, no, they were all kind of quite jokey songs, mm. you know, quite silly songs that, um, uh, that yeah, I didn't, I didn't see really working that well. But but definitely, you know, at the start of Supergrass, kind of coming up with chords on the piano for like all right or something or. Um, uh, you know, sitting down on the guitar to strum through the strange ones chords. You, yeah, you definitely get a feel of like, yeah, there's something happening here. What then kind of evolved when around Matador then? Was there something that kind of got you in a different headspace to write or did you just, just go in a different direction uh, in terms of writing? Yeah, well, it was just a different direction. I worked with somebody on the my first solo album. I worked with a, a friend of mine, Sam Williams, who I, I still we still hang out now. He's mm. still a good friend. Um, and you know, yeah, that was that was, I suppose that was that. You know, and and I felt on the second one maybe um, that actually I didn't want to work with the producer as such. I, I wanted to um, explore um, my surroundings a lot more. Mm. Um, to, to see what happened and, and I think that was the moment where I was I was unsure whether it was the right thing to do and I think once I got into the record I started getting feedback I realized that it was it was working you know just um, trying to explore my own ideas without any other distractions sort of thing yeah and there's there's something interesting about kind of being in a successful group as well and then uh, going about it on your own uh, what was there ever ever any hesitance or kind of doubts that that, would, that you would get to where you are now? Well, I never had, a, I, I didn't really plan on on doing the solo thing, you know, I didn't mm. really know if I was going to make that into a, uh, yeah, I didn't know if that would become my career or not. I just, okay. I, I think I was, I came out of Supergrass and six months after I realized I'd written some stuff. So I thought, <laughs> well, let's just, let's see if I can, get a record together and see what happens. And I just met really good people along the way, you know, people at the label that I've worked with since 2012 that I'm still working with, mm. even, even though they've been through three different companies themselves, but but just relationships that you get together and, and the guys that I'm working with in my live band who came onto this album a lot more in the studio. And so, um, 
it's just this sort of um, culmination of things that that have, have, have just made it a really joyous experience. You know, it's it's been some of the best years of my life. You know. Okay. Working on turn the car around then, because uh, as I mentioned, we've had some some interesting years. I, I suppose you've had a lot of time on your hands. So so what what kind of shaped or the direction of the album or how did you kind of start to to find those initial pieces or initial fragments of songs um i suppose it's sort of uh kind of i suppose it kind of came it, yeah just just by coming into the studio and and just starting with a beat or a hmm. bass line or something on piano or something that's just coming to my head that morning um and then it's just a case of of not thinking too much, but just just letting the the, the the yeah the initial sort of instinctive idea just happen. Put it down, record it as quickly as possible, <laughs> and then and then you just start to sort of make friends with it and just get excited about it. And and then for me, it's a case of building sort of building the sound because quite often I'm not playing with a live band in here. Right. I'm sort of just starting with sort of separate things um and just and just building the vibe trying to create a vibe that that i get really excited about you know i still know just like the whole thing is playing it back through the speakers and <laughs> and just going fuck yeah you know just getting a buzz i mean that's it's really simple it's, that's what i want to hear but with what you mentioned uh in the beginning kind of being open and, and ex exploring do you know beforehand what you're looking for is is it kind of uh feeling things out and seeing where you land. No, it's totally feeling things out. Okay. An iPhone note or something, some sort of voice note where it's like a couple of chords that I just picked up before, you know, quite often I kind of write good stuff just as I'm about to leave the house. Mm. You just kind of, you just sort of pick up a guitar <laughs> and then and then there's some cool chords come out and then you just, I quickly record them on my phone. So quite a lot of time it's maybe things like that. And then I'll just listen back to the last few days and, and think, yeah, let me, let me, let me put that down a bit better. Let me record that a bit better and see where it takes me. Uh, but it means that quite a lot of time on these recordings, I, there's a lot of early takes, which is really cool. I, I, I kind of enjoy those because it's kind of before you really know what you're properly doing. And I think mm. that little that little window where you've got a great idea, but you don't quite know what you're doing. I think that's sort of often where um, really great things happen. Is, is this true for create? creativity for you in general that that kind of the the more unusual and kind of uh quick moments that bring about a lot more than than if you as you mentioned kind of overthink it and kind of really try to delve into it yeah i think so i mean there is a time when you kind of overthink it i think it's more later mm. on i think when it's sure. when, when all the parts are down and you're maybe in the mixing stage and um things can get a little bit drawn out but definitely with with writing and recording i kind of I'm just always really intrigued and interested to sort of hear what, you know, almost not subconsciously I come out with, but just um, maybe not letting uh, the pressures of what you think you should write or, mm. or a, a, an album that I've just recently got into and thinking, oh, maybe I could do it a bit like some of that stuff or, you know, just removing all of those, um, yeah those external sort of needs or, or pressures to to have it a certain way um yeah that's kind of why i'm oh sorry that's that's kind of why i mentioned the the past uh, couple of years and a lot of things have uh, happening because we in 19 2019 you you rejoined with supergrass for uh, just a little bit and you had the taylor hawkins concert so all those kind of experience do they do they influence you in any way yeah, I mean, of course, they, they yeah, they they do influence it. I mean, I don't know, I don't know if the Supergrass reunion influenced my writing on this record. I think, okay. I think once I was away from doing those gigs and and I was here in my studio, I, I think I just settled back into my headspace. Um, so no, there was never real, there was never really any crossover in that way. Okay. But 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 absolutely, kind of more emotionally and. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think when I felt at times like it was dragging on, the reunion was, was reunion was going on a long time because of the pandemic and stuff. Sure. So maybe I would um, 
yeah, probably more accidental things. Like I would immerse myself in my record more <laughs> as a form of comfort because I'm fucked off that this reunion is going on so long. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, so I, I suppose it did have an impact, but um, but more in subtle ways. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's get into a couple of, of the songs then, because. Um, you mentioned kind of how those songs start with maybe just the an initial idea, a little bit of guitar or something. Uh, one of the songs that stuck out to me was not the only thing. So, so it starts with that acoustic guitar and then kind of it, it gets fleshed out. So, so what was the starting point for that song? Yeah, that was, that was quite an early, an early track. I think that was, I think I had that recorded. A lot of that track was recorded in like 2019, early 2019 even. And it was just an instrumental piece of music, really. Um, but most of it was there. Um, and I just always loved it. I remember, I remember kind of taking it with me on like little dog walks and having mm. my, my headphones in and, and just sonically it did, it did something to me. And there was this kind of warmth in the low end. So it was just a quirk of the recording. I didn't, I didn't get the same sort of frequencies on other tracks but it was just something about that recording or how I did it that it just was like a big warm hug you know the whole mm. uh, the, the music uh yeah so I knew that I loved that track and I knew that it should be on the record and then it was a case of right I've got I've got to finish it I've got to I've got to give this a, a story and, and a lyric and um yeah and then it really came together I can imagine that I'm not a songwriter but when you go on those walks and you're listening to it uh, do certain kind of words pop up or sentences that you think about lyrics? Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just because there's already a bit of a melody there. Mm. Um, and, and normally when I find a melody, there's usually one lyric that comes um, that, that just gives me some sort of direction. Um, and quite often I'll put down guide vocals that, that okay. are just not that, like a nonsense vocal. Sure. Um, where I'll just, it's more a, place marker for the melody but in doing so actually I kind of sing these like vow like do whatever sounds and and then quite often that that directs me to where I want to go yeah when did the lyrics kind of uh, <clears throat> get solidified with this song then was there something and this is perhaps a question more overall for the album as well were there certain things you wanted to talk about as well no no there was nothing I sort of planned to talk about okay. or I, I wanted to talk about it's more just you know letting myself process events around me and, and and the situation around me and um uh so yeah i think there are moments in this record that are kind of that are quite intimate you know and mm -hmm. isolated you know maybe because of the writing it during the pandemic i don't know and then there are other times where it was more outward and and kind of looking ahead looking forward and uh, but yeah, not the only things. I think it was it was more just I kind of was quite I had a few lyrics and I was quite interested in it, almost like a follow-up to Girl Who Fell to Earth mm. seven years ago, like a kind of like a sequel or like an update. Not 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 it wasn't purely to my daughter, but it was almost like sort of, yeah, this is uh, you know, yeah, so where are you at now? How's it how's it going? You know, and <laughs> And then, and, and then some of my thoughts for, for helping her out. And you know, now, now this is, yeah, she's not a 12 year old kid I'm singing about. She's like a 19 year old, 19 year old woman I'm singing about. Sure. But it's, I thought that was quite sweet. You know, the idea of a, yeah, like a sort of spiritual follow up to a girl who fell to earth in a way. But that's interesting because, um... Don't say it's over. It's it's kind of uh, it details to to a sh little extent to kind of the how you met your your now wife, I think. So so is is that part of that inclusion of the of the lockdowns that you kind of with your family the the only people close that you kind of thought uh, started to think more about that? Well, that's I mean they say you know yeah you write about your experiences mm. and that's why it's great to travel and to meet people and to to do crazy things and stuff. But yeah, we were locked away for two years. So yeah, <laughs> I was writing about my experiences probably which were my family a lot. But yeah, I mean, like I said, there's, there's, there's elements of the record that, that are like that. And I think there's also a lot of, like I said, looking forward and, and maybe sure. even overnight, overnight trains, it's got real int intimacy, but then it's kind of longing for, longing for the normality of, of big train journeys or driving around in your car and you know, mm -hmm. the freedom of life you know um so yeah it's it's got 
a bit of everything in it, this record. Yeah, and then uh, a song like Sunny the Strong is kind of, uh, in a way, I suppose, completely separated from yourself, where you delve into the story of somebody else. And I, I found it, it this interesting, because what did, did fascinate you about these kind of forgotten heroes? Well, that was another thing, probably, with the environment in terms of watching a lot of documentaries, mm -hmm. you know, like, over the last couple of years, we've been, me and my wife just love, you know, music documentaries or, or you know, things about old Hollywood or, you know, and... and, and just you know fascinating stories about people's lives and and so yeah and then I got into this the idea of yeah just being at the height of your fame and being kind of whipped off in, into the army or something and how insane that would have been sure. um and uh, and yeah all the obviously very famous story you know Elvis and stuff although I don't know how much Elvis was really in the army I think it was I think he probably had he probably had a pretty kind of easy run of it but um yeah just the, the, the fascinated with that idea um and uh and so i started reading stuff and watching docu documentaries but then i found this article about this boxer um and thought it was just really interesting so just went from there this kind of uh, more narrative style of writing is that something you you try to expand more or is this something that you've always kind of done to some extent how, how do you see that kind of uh, evolution of your songwriting that part of it yeah, I think it's always been there and I think it is always there. It just depends when you want to tap into it. And I mm. think um, I definitely felt like for that track, it was it was really the opening lyric. The opening line was always, although the name was never there, but it was always like, you know, somebody, there's something. It, sure. it, was, it was always about someone. It was kind of like, um, that was the opening lyric was always going to be about somebody. Um, so yeah, that that just directed me to that, uh, and it just yeah, it just depends. The song, the song usually guides me in a way. Yeah, and uh, now that life has returned to some sense of normalcy, I suppose, um, and this is too early days because the album hasn't even been released yet. But has your mind already shifted to new stories and new ideas uh, to, for songs? Um, no, I mean I'm sort of I'm pretty deep in this really at the moment. Okay. You know, since since finishing it and then getting the live performance together and and then doing all the press, you know, I haven't I haven't looked forward yet, but um, you know, definitely excited to, you know, always excited for what 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 what's going to happen musically. Yeah. Now talking about the live performances, then am I right in saying that you plan to perform the entire album uh, sequentially, or just in its entirety? Oh no, not necessarily. No, we'll see how it goes. Okay. We, we we did a show in London a couple of weeks ago that was that was amazing. Actually, it was it was it was brilliant. And I think I played, I think I played like six from the album or seven from the album. Okay. Um, and it was all, yeah. The, the band just did an incredible job. Um, yeah, it was so satisfying and incredibly exciting to to perform the album live. So um, it's going to be great next year. Yeah. That, that process of translating what you do in the studio uh, to the live stage, is that a difficult one, particularly when uh, you've had so much time to, to kind of tinker with sounds and everything? Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's, it's a tough process, you know, and, and I mean, everybody worked so hard um, mm -hmm. uh, to make it happen. And I mean, it's often, you know, I'm often kind of forgetting parts as well. I mean, I, like I said, when you're recording stuff instinctively the first time you played it, you don't often rem remember what you did. So <laughs> even for me to kind of try and retrace my steps, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a process, but, um, but really rewarding when we pulled it off on stage. It was, sure. it was, it was a really vibey gig. Yeah, and the crowd were amazing. They just, they, I could sense that they were buzzing off the fact that we were kind of like, fuck, this is really <laughs> working, you know, yeah. For somebody who's been on stage, I, I suppose, since you were 12 or 13 or something, uh, did you miss it? And what, what does that mean to be in front of people and, and to kind of show uh, share your creativity with them? What does that mean to you? It's kind of like the whole, it's, I sort of, I guess it it sort of emotionally validates everything just to sort of play it in, in the room live and to to have that response. And I think, I think, like, like with the gig in London the other day, it's just sort of something so special about the reaction after after you play a new song and there's like a sort of swell of, of, of like satisfaction or something. It's kind of, it's amazing. And then there's a real connection. And then even just saying 
I don't know, even just answering someone shouting out something and then you have a kind of cool little connection together and and then everyone else just sort of kind of feels more comfortable and then and yeah so it's just a it's an amazing experience so finally then because uh, you mentioned that when you started this this kind of solo uh, career that you that it wasn't that conscious that you just start writing some songs and then kind of eventually uh, release an album so how do you see what you do now do you how should i phrase this what is your ambition so to say as a songwriter well, now I see myself as a as a prof- as a proper professional, <laughs> <laughs> as a as a skilled professional. I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I just, um, uh, I feel, I feel, I feel thankful, and I feel uh, happy that that there's there's that that life is as interesting as it is, you know, and that I haven't. That I, I I did Supergrass and I did the reunions and we can maybe do some more shows at some point in the future. I'm cool with that, if if the right thing happens. Um, but at the same time, I've you know I, I've I'm on a path with this stuff that's really exciting me and it's um, um yeah it it was always for me about not just staying in one place you know and I didn't I didn't want to just you know exist off what I did previously I didn't mm. want to just you know have that be the only thing and um so yeah I, f- I feel like a uh, yeah life is it's got a lot of color in it you know? well the last thought then do you think about legacy a lot because you are part of kind of uh, not only British uh, music but kind of the music in general so do you think about that kind of the, the the tradition of songwriters and all that stuff no, I'm not really. No, I mean, I, I maybe there'll be a time when I can, when I can uh, assess, you know, I don't know the legacy in some way. But um, no, obviously, just very proud. I think if anything, my kids probably remind me more. Mm-hmm. You know, my my youngest daughter, will, you know, they, they all of her and her mates. They look on YouTube and they they see everything I've done, and and it kind of blows it blows their mind a bit sometimes. Yeah, it's like when they realise. There was a whole life before they were born, you know, of this insane shit that I did. Um, all these mad. My, my dad is actually quite cool. That that kind of idea. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> still a bit of that going. Even now, she like comes up and she she's just surprised by seeing something or whatever. But um, yeah, so they 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 keep reminding me <laughs> that I've done good things. Bless them. Well, that's great. Uh, Gus, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me and uh, best of luck with the album next year. Appreciate it. Yeah, good to talk, man. Thank you.